welcome to another beautiful day in the West Australian wheat belt. I'm here to talk to you today about my experiences of using the Olympus OM Zico 135mm f2.8 lens on full frame digital mirrorless cameras. Now, many years ago, I had a very basic camera kit comprising of an Olympus OM Zuiko 50mm f1.8 and the aforementioned 135mm f2.8. And when I first got it over that summer, I shot an awful lot of portraits with that lens, the uh, 135 these pictures were incredibly popular. And in fact, it was that popularity um, and the success with them that uh, made me consider going uh, professional with my photography. But unfortunately, I uh, was lured by the siren call of uh, zoom lenses and I part exchanged the 135 against a zoom lens. And uh, while the zoom lens was very good and became my uh, photographic workhorse, I really did uh, regret getting rid of the 135 millimeter f2.8. Fast forward some 30 years, and I've been reappraising my uh, Olympus lens collection. Those old manual lenses have been sitting on my shelf for too long and I decided to uh, invest in a second-hand uh, Sony a7R and an Olympus uh, OM to Sony E adapter and start using those lens again as they were intended. The results, to be perfectly honest, exceeded my expectations. Um, I was quite surprised that these really old designs um, actually delivered the goods on uh, a modern high density um, digital camera. So a little while ago, I was finding myself sort of idly um, trawling through eBay one night and I came across a seller who had a lot of new old Olympus stock. And he had, this is stuff that was still in its boxes and had never been used and he had lo and behold an Olympus OM Zuiko 135 millimeter f2.8 lens sat there as new in its box I just couldn't help myself I pressed the purchase button and couldn't wait for it to arrive it was like being reunited with an old friend it was absolutely amazing and just handling it you know there ought to be laws against lens fondling but this lens feels beautiful in the hands it's it's lovely density the metal body the lovely buttery zoom focus of around 180 uh, degrees is fantastic the click dents on the uh, aperture ring have a very satisfying feel to them. I mean, it's just a lovely, lovely lens to use. It has, like, unlike many modern lenses, it has a built-in lens hood which slides out over the front element to protect it. This is a feature I really wish that a lot of manufacturers would put back in their lenses especially the tellies and uh, it, it, it's a nice thoughtful touch especially in this day and age where a lot of manufacturers slug you an extra hundred bucks to uh, buy a new uh, lens hood right now i'm shooting this video on um, a standard lens um, that's uh, 25 mil in micro four thirds somewhere around the 32 mil on APS-C and 50mm of course on a full frame sensor. So let's immediately switch over and see 
what this lens would look like. The camera is in the same position, um, so you'll be able to make a comparison here. So there you go. Now you're seeing me shot through the uh, 135. I'm stopped down to, I think it's f5.6 um, at this distance to get, because it's manual and so as to get as much of my um, face in focus as possible. But I'm sure um, you can see how the uh, lens renders from that. Okay, let's switch back. The EZGO Auto T 135mm f2.8 was one of the first lenses released when the Olympus system was launched in 1972. It was easily identifiable thanks to the chrome front filter ring, the so-called silver nose. In 1977, it was replaced by the Zuiko Auto T 135mm f2.8, which is the subject of this review. Other than the improved multi-coated optics and some cosmetic changes, notably the loss of the silver nose, the lenses are largely the same. Both versions of the lens are the same with an optical formula of five elements in five groups with no fancy glass formulations. Both versions come in at a svelte 360 grams. The lens departs from the common Olympus filter size of 49 millimeters and uses one of 55 to facilitate the extra light gathering capability of this lens over the f3.5 version. This is a very modest size though in this day of 77 and 82 millimeter filter thread size used by many modern lenses. So let's uh, look at how the lens uh, performs. Although in this day and age of f 1.4 and f 1.2 primes, the maximum aperture seems a little pedestrian. The aperture range of f 2.8 to f 22 allows for depth of field control when combined with the compression effect of a true telephoto. So down to the nitty gritty. How does the lens perform on a modern digital camera? And the quick answer is very well. Barrel distortion is virtually non-existent, and in terms of centre sharpness wide open, the lens is pleasantly sharp, although lacking in a little contrast, but this improves considerably as the lens is stopped down to f8. At the edges, at f2.8, predictably the lens is softer and has poor contrast. This is not altogether surprising considering the very simple design with no exotic elements. Things improve by f8, although it does not reach the standards of the centre. Vignetting is obvious wide open and again clears up as the lens is stopped down and disappears at f8. There is some chromatic aberration but it is very mild and easily fixed in Lightroom. Lens resolution charts are all very well and most lenses are not optimised to perform at their best at close focusing distances. So let's see how the lens does with a real life scene. And focusing on the balcony of Faversham House, we can see that the results here bear out those that we found when shooting the resolution charts. When stressed by shooting into the sun, veiling flare is very apparent. The solution to this, of course, is to use a lens hood. So let's sum up. It is a good lens. And uh, basically, to uh, get anything better, you'd have to spend a lot more money on a very highly corrected modern design. I mean, Sony, 
and Sigma both make quite fast uh, 135 millimeter lenses now of f 1.8 and uh, you know they're very good but they're an awful lot more money than you get have to pay for one of these in use well the slightly softer edges are very good for shooting portraits with this lens and this lens is really ideally suited to portraits um, some may feel it's a bit long at uh, 135 mil but I quite like it as a uh, as a focal length for shooting portraits the true telephoto nature of this lens um, makes it very uh, useful for uh, landscape photography and um, it certainly uh, resolves enough um, detail uh, at uh, f8 to uh, achieve that The um, long focus throw of 180 degrees makes it very attractive for um, video shooters. Means you can get a, a lot of control over finding focus, which is uh, a plus. And all in all, I think, you know, if you want a manual focus uh, medium telephoto lens then you can't go wrong with uh, purchasing one of these whether you can find one um, that's new old stock um, is another issue but if you see one in good condition on eBay for an attractive price of uh, around the 300 Australian dollars um, I'd say jump on it quickly it's a really nice lens to use well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.